Hi everyone, so I'm finally allowed to do a full and complete review, including performance, of the Power Color Red Devil Vega card. So it's probably only really the second fully fledged Vega card that we've had arrive, so it could be quite interesting. So we can have a quick look at the card itself, but it's all very familiar Red Devil kind of aesthetics. First thing that we do need to point out is it isn't just a two slot. It's not quite a three, so it's like a two and three quarter. One of the things that uh, wasn't really made very clear in all the blurb is it did say that there was a switch here to turn the LED on and off, but what they didn't say is it's actually got like a two-way mirror effect. So if you turn the switch on, the red will show through. If you leave it off, it doesn't. There's obviously quite a lot of red in the rest of the card though. And it is a, I'm trying to get the right angle for you, but it is a lovely, lovely red. Like a really nice, you can kind of see a bit of the sparkle, but the, the actual red part is plastic. And then the black part that goes over the top is uh, anodized aluminium. But what you could do, if you didn't like it, and you can do it either way around, is you could easily paint the red if you wanted um, to change it up. The black comes off with these screws and you can whizzle those off and the black comes off. So if it was me, I'd paint the black bits white and then that would be, I'd have a red and white card and I could kind of live with that. I'd probably paint the back plate as well. But if you don't particularly like red and you wanted something different, I do actually think that a really nice light gray would go really well with the black and the way that the cutouts have been done. Yes, it would be voiding your warranty, but it would make a good weekend project. The back plate round the back uh, is there's lots and lots of cutouts on it. But what you can see is it does also extend past the uh, end of the PCB, which is here, and actually ends up holding on to the end of the cooler as well. There's a lot going on in with the cooler itself. There are six, I believe there are six. No, there's six millimeter heat pipes and eight millimeter heat pipes. I do apologize. I think it's two eight millimeter heat pipes and then four six millimeter heat pipes. Getting all the numbers and everything mixed up is uh, never that um, difficult for me when you consider the amount of stuff I do have to read out and I don't script. But it's a fairly beefy cooler. As you can see a massive base plate down the bottom two eight pins which is a fair old bit even for this card you know because the the vega stuff can pull quite a bit of power three fans it does actually end up being quite quiet as well as i'll show you in a minute the only thing that you do need to be aware of is there is no dvi around the back so you get two display ports and a couple of hdmis there is also just up here which i will talk to you about in more depth in a minute a silent mode a standard mode and an overclock mode for the BIOS. If you want to switch between, all you need to make sure you do is you uh, shut the rig down, flick the switch, and then start it back up again. Okay, so there is a lot for me to try and get through to you with this one. You may need to take some notes. Don't kind of go nuts in the comments until you've heard everything that I've got to say about it because it hasn't been clear cut and it has been a little difficult to get some of the results that we wanted. So that we, we did do some testing with the silent mode, the standard mode, and even the overclock mode as well. And if I bring the graph up, it didn't really look like it had done particularly well. And I did tell Power Color, um, and basically what we ended up finding out was that I could get the best overclock in the standard mode. Um, so that's what we did, and that's how we've based our tests. And I'll explain to you about the overclocks and stuff in a minute anyway. But what we found out today, which is the day before NDA, is that this was actually um, uh, an AMD driver issue. So you actually needed to use 17.10.1 uh, for everything to work properly. But we'd been testing on 17.10.2. They've now even updated it to 0.3, but to get it all to work properly, at the time of recording the video, you need the 0.1 driver. And what the 0.1 driver uh, actually lets happen is everything work properly. But if you use two, three, two or three, 
then uh, it effectively stops the overclock mode in the, in the BIOS itself being recognized properly, which was why with the clock speeds, the overclock mode didn't look like it was doing very well. Um, there was some issues in there where it was misreading voltages and the fact that the voltage was too high meant it was not overheating, but it was, it was holding it back. Uh, and then by turning, if you then did turn the voltages back up, you could get the scores to come up a little bit. But anyway, eventually we found this out, which was today, and I have done some preliminary testing with the 0.1 driver and the overclock mode does then just pull in front of the standard mode overclock that uh, we had done. Now, with the uh, the Vega stuff, as it has been with like the old 580 and stuff, you don't really need to touch the core speed. You can have a play around with it if you want, but the way to get the best from these cards is just increasing the power limit. And I would work on it increasing the power limit first. That's the one with the little percentage sign in whatever overclocking software that you want to do. Once you get to a point that you're happy with that, then what I would do amazingly is start to take the core voltage down. Now that may sound completely backwards, but it does seem a way to be able to get a little bit more power or bench runs and you know the, the scores at the end of the day out from these cards. But what you do need to do is if you, um, say for instance, you turn your power limit up to 120%, you run a, uh, a benchmark, run the same one every time. We've got into the habit of using 3D Mark Firestrike Ultra. So you run that. And then if you go up to 130%, you run it again and you keep doing that. And with the voltages, every time you make it go, make it go down a little bit, you run a benchmark and then you run a benchmark and then you run a benchmark. So every time you make those changes, because you can get to a point where um, the scores can start to drop down and we obviously want, don't want that. We need to find the top of the curve. So that's why I say run a benchmark between everyone. And if you get to a point where you're like, you're happy and the scores are good, then what you need to do is lock the door and have a massive gaming session to make sure that it is going to be 100% stable with significantly uh, long use as well. So we did manage to, you know, eke out a little bit. I'll show you underneath. The, then the one to um, look at, I mean, with the, the average, that is uh, the, the, when it comes to clocks, that's the one that you're trying to get highest. Because when it comes to the, the normal and the peak, it doesn't really make a blind bit of difference. But with AMD as well, where we're not really overclocking the actual GPU clock speed, that is one of the other reasons why it's very critical for us to look at benchmarks rather than just how you know high the frequency is running. So that's a lot for you to kind of keep in mind. But if you end up buying one of these cards, you're going to know this to be able to get the best from it. It's not really the type of thing that you're just gonna to wanna to, you know, spend 10 minutes playing around with. If you wanna overclock them, you are gonna to need to um, spend some time on it. And the best thing that I can also say to do is keep a pen and notepad and write everything down and start circling stuff when you think something's good or you know, asterisk in when something's bad and it will genuinely help you in the long run and also when stuff goes wrong two months down the line when the card's decided it doesn't want to keep your max overclock anymore you can actually go back and see all your old results and that is exactly what we do with every single one of the cards we test i'm not just blowing smoke up your bottom I'm actually trying to help so the clock speed side of it because of the dodgy drivers and stuff like that we, you know at the end of the day i haven't got time to run all of the tests again with a day to go. Took us two days to do the testing in the first place and then we've got to do the graphs, got to do the videos. So what we're going to do is we're going to base our review on our max standard overclock. Uh, one of the things I will say is uh, the, they are incredibly close to what we could have got with the, uh, the other one. And there's something, as you'll see in a, in a minute, well, I'll explain to you in a minute. So with the power draw, um, when you open up all the taps and you overclock it, at the end of the day, it's not surprising, they do use a lot of power because at the end of the day, we are just telling it to use more power because the Vega stuff is power restricted. It's the way it's always been. It was with the last gen as well. So it's power restricted. So you let it have more power. Yes, it will use a lot more power, 
but that is where your performance comes from. So with this, you just need to kind of keep in mind that you can't have an itty bitty power supply. But if you're paying £529 for a card like this, I'd be worried if you didn't have a good power supply anyway. So this is where we can talk about performance. And I cannot stress, you can go and have a look at loads more results on the OC3D website. We always do keep all the other stuff there. It's gonna be a 20 page review. I talk too much as it is. I can't cover everything in a video. And let's face it, I kind of need you to go to my website as well. Because if you don't go to my website, eventually I'll, I wouldn't be able to make videos anymore. So 3D Mark, you can see that there's a big difference between uh, the standard mode and then the standard mode with the overclock because it, it is still the standard mode with the overclock. That OC basically means it's the manual settings that I put in myself. So when you have a look at that, you can actually see that it's just behind the manual overclock that I put on one of the, or the original Vega that I got. So it was the reference Vega. Now I will talk to you about living with it and stuff in a minute, but what you need to realize is that was an early um, sample that we got um, and at the end of the day, they'd sent it to us. It would have been from a good batch. I would have thought it did overclock really well, but at the same time, I had the fans on 100% and I had fans blowing on the back of the card and I, you could not live with it putting that kind of performance out. With the power color, you could because it's actually quite quiet and performs really well. So it, we didn't even touch the fan profile to turn it up to maximum on this and it kept it all you know, within, um, uh, within its, what I would call within its limits and it was playing everything and it was all 100% stable as well. Moving on to games. Again, here with DSX, you can see that you had the, the standard 64 above it. Um, but the other thing that you need to kind of realize is yes, the standard 64 was above it, but again, it was really hot. And with the uh, Red Devil, it wasn't. Ghost Recon Wildlands, it's a similar kind of thing, but you can see with this game, when you mix in all the other stuff, that the, um, the Nvidia stuff, it does kind of favor that a little bit more. Uh, but you know, we have to mix in a bit of balance every now and then. It can't all be about you know them being the absolute best. So there has been a lot of kind of like playing around that we've had to do with this and retesting. I said I talked to you about the performance. So we did go back and we've tested a few of the games today with the older driver, which lets us into the overclock mode, and we overclocked it again. But it still didn't beat the manual overclock that we were getting with the original Vega 64 that we got, which is another reason why I haven't delayed the review and um, put results up later. But to be honest with you, I know there's two of these cards in Europe and I'm the only one in the UK with one. So Power Color, I actually spoke to them about it. They were like, no, we'd like you to publish with what you've got already. We do not want you to delay. We want it out on launch day. So, you know, there's always a heck of a lot of politics when it comes to this stuff, but it did seem where it didn't really beat the um, reference one, it, uh, I didn't see any reason to go through and retest for sometimes like 50 points difference. So you're now kind of thinking to yourself, why the hell can it not be a reference card? Well, at the end of the day, yes, all of the power stuff and all the overclocking goodness and the massive cooler does make it easier to live with, but it doesn't, it's not going to get any more out of the actual core itself. It's just like with the green team stuff, the reference cards always do really well. And then when it comes to the aftermarket stuff, people are wondering why you know the, the reference card is still at the top of the graphs. Well, A, you get a good core, and B, the limit is never normally really the actual PCB in design. It's normally the actual core that's in the middle of it anyway. And that's not to say that they haven't cherry picked these. It's just the fact that it's just the way it is. So what do you get with the Devil? Well, you get the design for starters. You get decent temperatures and you get an audible level. So the amount of noise it makes when it's running absolutely flat taps is at a level that you can actually live with. It's not a silent card. Um, it's not a silent card at all. It will keep your temperatures between 70 and 80 degrees in standard mode, even with an overclock but it won't be silent, it's just gonna be quieter. But the, the absolute kind of thing I cannot drive home hard enough is it's an absolute um, feces amount, uh, feces load um, cooler and quieter than the reference card. You can live with this in an overclocked state 
on a day-to-day -day basis or, or even running flat out whereas with the reference card I, I just I, I couldn't it is a bit of a shame that we've still got the red but it's the red devil card so you know at the end of the day I don't think you would buy a red devil card and then moan about it having some red on there and I actually do really like it now the thing is is there and this is where we get into politics is people are already saying well we've only really got the Asus one out at the moment and you can't get them um, and that's because and this is the thing that people haven't realized is AMD haven't been sending the Vega um, actual GPUs out they're in such limited quantity they are a you know they are a bit like gold dust at the moment so that's why everything is taking so much longer to come through yeah um I, I don't want to go too much you know beyond that because it's it would be purely speculation but if you can get one of these and you're after a vega card best thing i can say is yes it's a really good card is it i i've only had limited hands-on with the asus one because when they offered it to me for review and i was going to take it for review I also knew that there was going to be so limited samples in the channel, I actually got to the point where I didn't really see the point. Whereas I know these are for sale on um, uh, or on pre-order at the moment at OCUK, £529, which does put it in quite an expensive point. But if you're hell-bent on going um, uh, AMD, maybe you play a lot of Vulcan games, maybe you're going to be really looking forward to getting your teeth into Wolfstein 2, for example, which is going to be Vulcan, this will absolutely ravage it. It will absolutely love it. It's got the cooler sorted for you, you've got overclocking options, and you'll be able to live with it. And when you kind of wrap all that up, and the fact that, with all due respect, I've seen reference cards for more money than this, and they still are more money than this as well, if you're looking around, I think they've actually done a really good job. And that is the why we're going to give it the OC3D Enthusiast Award.